The Great Mosquito Cathedral of Cordoba is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, constructed over a thousand years ago. Upon its completion it ranked as the third largest mosque in the Islamic world. Located in the heart of Cordoba, it served as the primary place of worship for Muslims in 10th century Iberia. We're now in the uh, courtyard, which back in the days would have served as the place where people would have performed wudu. At that time, Cordoba was among the world's largest and most populous cities, with estimates suggesting a population of over 300,000 residents. The Moors were what Europeans called the Muslims who inhabited Islamic Iberia. Although medieval depictions of the Moors in Renaissance art depict them as being sub-Saharan African in phenotype, the genetic profile of the people who lived in Muslim Spain was varied, with some individuals being genetically indistinguishable from modern Spaniards today, whilst others having detectable levels of North African and even Arabian ancestry, indicating gene flow from the connected Muslim world at the time. In the 13th century, 262 years after Islam spread through Cordoba, King Ferdinand III of Castile besieged the city, transforming the great mosque into a cathedral. Even now, centuries later, the cathedral remains a place where mass is celebrated, standing as a testament to the Christian reconquest of formerly Islamic territories. Up there, in the distance, over there you've got the bell tower, which once upon a time was a minaret. It was a minaret up until the 16th century, and then it got transformed into a bell tower. Contrary to popular belief, not all of Iberia was under Muslim dominion for 800 years, as some narratives suggest. In fact, it was primarily the south, especially Granada, that is often romanticized as the last stronghold of Islam in Western Europe. Nestled in the fertile foothills of the Sierra Nevada, Granada boasted a significant Muslim population well into the early 15th century. The city's architectural marvels, such as the Alhambra and its majestic Nasrid Palace, stand as testaments to the Islamic influence in the region. In 1492, Granada was besieged by the Catholic monarchs, Ferdinand and Isabella, ending approximately 800 years of Islamic rule in the region. Before Granada was besieged, attitudes toward Muslims in much of Spain were mixed but generally tolerable. However, this tolerance shifted dramatically after the siege. The Alhambra Decree of 1492 forced Jews to convert to Christianity or face expulsion. A similar fate befell Muslims a decade later. Jewish converts became known as conversos, whilst Muslim converts became known as moriscos. In this era, the broader Christian world grappled with its own insecurities, notably after the Ottoman Empire's capture of Constantinople. The fear of a formidable Islamic power at the gates of Europe led to heightened paranoia within Spain, casting the moriscos as potential internal enemies, despite their converted status. This suspicion infiltrated all levels of society, subjecting both moriscos and conversos to intense scrutiny and distrust. Subsequently, discriminatory policies such as the concept of limpieza de sangre, or purity of blood, were practiced, which distinguished old Christians from new Christians. To rise up the ranks, documentation proving ancestry free from both Muslim and Jewish blood was required, fueling an entire industry dedicated to forging documents. From a genetic perspective, the Moriscos, compared to modern Spaniards today, had higher levels of North African ancestry, comparable to modern Spaniards from the Canary Islands. The oppression of the Morisco eventually sparked revolts, as Moriscos resisted cultural erasure and systemic persecution, until the Spanish monarchy, under the command of King Philip III, mandated the forced expulsion of all the Morisco population involving an estimated 300,000 to 400,000 deportations. Most of these Morisco would settle in North Africa, especially in Morocco, and mostly in the northern cities including Tetuan, Chefchaouen, and Fez, which explains why many Moroccans in these regions score substantial components of Iberian ancestry. Others would settle in the western portions of the Ottoman Empire, explaining why some Levantines, for example, have components of North African-related ancestry, and also why Sephardic Jews have historically had a presence in the region. Although the Reconquista initially began as a campaign to reclaim formerly Christian lands from Muslims, it evolved into a systematic effort to purge the Iberian Peninsula of its Muslim heritage, both culturally and genetically. Despite these efforts, the genetic imprint of the Moors is indelibly etched into the modern Spanish populace. 
Interestingly, North African ancestry in Iberia doesn't conform to a north-south gradient as one might expect, but rather exhibits an east-west pattern. The highest frequencies of North African admixture, excluding the Canary Islanders who have elevated levels of North African ancestry due to the indigenous Guanche people of the islands, are first found in Galicia and Portugal at around 13%. This percentage noticeably diminishes as one moves eastward and northward, tapering off to nearly zero, with regions like the Basque country showing undetectable levels of North African related admixture. This distribution pattern is likely due to the fact that the Portuguese Inquisition, unlike the Spanish Inquisition, involved less expulsions, with greater emphasis on conversions. It's crucial to acknowledge that this history of genetic exchange between Iberia and North Africa predates the Islamic expansion. Nevertheless, distinctly, North African haplogroups such as EM81 are found highest in regions like Extremadura at around 16%. The highest percentage of EM81 in Europe is found among the Pasiegos at around 30%, an isolated community living in the mountains of Cantabria. The influence of the Moors transcends beyond DNA, with over 4,000 words of Arabic origin firmly embedding themselves within the Spanish lexicon, including commonplace words like azúcar, which means sugar, aceite, which means oil, almohada, meaning pillow, and arroz, meaning rice. Moreover, the culinary traditions of Spain bear the indelible marks of Moorish gastronomy with ingredients such as saffron and rice being introduced by the Moors, giving rise to iconic dishes like the paella. In summary, the legacy of the Moors isn't just a footnote in history, but rather it's woven into the very cultural and genetic landscape of the modern Iberian Peninsula. The subtle genetic nuances and the enduring cultural elements such as architecture, language and cuisine are testaments to a shared history that continues to shape the cultural and genetic landscape of Spain today. Ladies and gentlemen, I anticipate that you enjoyed this documentary. This video in reality is a precursor to the upcoming documentary series that I'm creating with a professional filmmaker in Morocco. And I thought I'd add an additional twist to the contemporary way that I make my videos. Getting myself out on the field and actually seeing these things for what they are at face value. As always, if you've done an existing DNA test and you would like to have a comprehensive ancestry reading conducted by myself, make sure to check the link out in my bio. And guys, I'm very, very excited for the upcoming videos that I'm going to be presenting to you in the future. I anticipate that this video delivered on the value that you uh, signed up for and this is Ali from Ancestral Brew signing out and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace out. Espero que tengas un día fantástico, un día buenísimo. Muchas gracias por tu tiempo y nos vemos guys. Hasta luego.